Welcome to this induction session for our management theory module. I'm the module leader, Dr. Phil Kelly, and I'm going to tell you about teaching, learning, and assessment for this course. The session will last about 30 minutes. So the things that we'll be covering in this session, we'll take a look at the module aims and learning outcomes, which form the framework for what you'll learn. We'll explain how the module will be delivered and taught and assessed. A little bit about me. If you want to know more, you can go onto the university website, look on staff profiles, and you can read about my own experience. I started life as a management practitioner, had quite a few jobs. My main jobs before becoming an academic were as a management consultant and worked in about 20 different countries worldwide at pretty much every managerial level. I then made a decision to return to university, studied for a doctorate in business and management at Manchester University uh, before embarking on my career as a senior lecturer and then later as a reader in management here at John Moores University. During that time, I've written around 10 management textbooks. The latest one was written this year or published this year, and that's in the bottom right of the screen. And it's called Management Theory and Practice Edition nine and we'll be using that book for this module you can obtain the book from the amazon website make sure you do get edition nine and not a previous edition but you will be using this book pretty much every day or week uh, for the next semester and also on the management competencies module you'll be using this book that'll be in semester two the book is available in the library, but because we rely so heavily on it, I do suggest you get in your own copy. Lots of resources associated with the book, including PowerPoint slides and multiple choice questions and other things. And you'll be able to download those once you've got the book. And there are details in the book of where that site is as a companion website. And so you can access those resources. Before we get going uh, and discuss the module and how it's structured, it's important to remember how this module forms part of your overall degree program. And most of you in the room will be enrolled on one of the six main uh, degree programs. And I'll just spend the next five minutes reminding you of the program and the program structure before telling you a little bit more about how this module fits in. You can see from this diagram, which shows the overall uh, program design, that this module features in semester one and is common to all of the master's programs that we uh, offer. Uh, and it's a significant part of your semester one foundation. Okay, a little bit about the programs and then we'll go into the specifics for this module. Hi, I'm Dr. Phil Kelly. I belong to the postgraduate team at the Liverpool Business School where I teach on a selection of their master's degrees in management and related specialisms. In this introductory presentation, I will explain the different master's degrees we offer, commenting on who teaches the courses, where and how we deliver them. I will also comment on the structure, similarities and differences in our MSc programmes so that you can make an informed choice as to which may be best for you. I will discuss our three one-year master's degrees. That's master's in uh, management, pure, or international business and management, or management and digital business. Each of those three master's degrees takes one year to complete, and they all share the common theme of management, but with a particular specialism in some cases. For each of those three degrees, we also offer a two-year version, which includes an advanced practice course which gives you some experience of working on a team on a live consultancy project. So I'll go through some of these in more detail next. So as a postgraduate team, as I've said, we're part of the Liverpool Business School. And we have a dedicated team to deliver the master's programmes that I've just talked about. Over the next few minutes, I'll give you a little bit more detail about those degrees and how we deliver them. So I'll look at who, what, where, why, when to do with the degrees. In terms of the location, we're all 
located in the same purpose-built Redmond's building, which is a new building located in the heart of the city centre and near to many of the amenities and also various university facilities. We have a dedicated team of several senior lecturers and readers, and we've been delivering these programmes for several years now. The programmes are managed by myself, Dr Phil Kelly and Dr Olatunde, and we look after the six different programmes and are helped with delivering those programmes by a number of senior lecturers. Three dedicated senior lecturers on the team teach things like international business and strategy, supply chain management and research methods, and they're members of the postgraduate team. We also have a number of lecturers from the business school who help us deliver the programmes and offer various specialisms. For example, in things like digital business and research methods in detail. So as I said, there are six different degree programmes. They're all about management, so they all share some modules, but have some modules that are specific to that particular degree. So there's a Masters in Management that takes a year to deliver. Then similarly, there is a Masters in International Business and Management, which is, again, a specialist degree focusing on international business. And then we have the Management and Digital Business Masters degree, which again is about management, but also has an emphasis on digital business. Each of those one-year programmes, as I said, can be delivered as a two-year programme with advanced practice. So let's have a look at the design of those programmes and focus on the one-year programmes initially. As I said, they share various modules because they're all about management, and those modules that are shared are shown in blue. But each has its own specific modules that makes that degree unique and a specialist programme, and they're shown below in that kind of orangey colour. Our one-year degrees are delivered over three semesters, typically starting around September, October, of the year and the first semester we have two or three modules um, in management theory, management business research and the specialist module being delivered. You can see that management theory is one of the first modules that you'll take. That's a 20 credit module, it has number 20 by the side of it in the diagram and that indicates that there are about 200 hours of study associated with that module. And management theory gives you a good foundation in many of the management concepts. Semester one is followed by semester two, where you'll go on to do the generic modules of management strategy or managing strategy, management practice and digital business management, and also further work on managing business research. There are more modules in semester two, and we've designed the programme like this on purpose to help people from overseas transit into the UK postgrad system or students from the UK get used to postgraduate study. It allows us to give more hand-holding help in the first semester, where we can give more formative support to help you with business skills as well as business theory. At the end of the two semesters, then in semester three, you'll do the management project, the dissertation uh, in the first year. If you're doing the two-year advanced practice course, then you don't have a semester three. When you come back the following year, the semester one will include the advanced practice module, and then in the semester two of the second year, you'll do the research project. Other than those things, the programmes are very similar. But the research project itself is a great opportunity to shape the degree in the way that you want it and you'll be in charge of your project and the topic of investigation. So, We've been delivering these programmes for a number of years. Our students like them. The feedback that we receive is always very positive and strong. Occasionally they tell us things that we could do better and each year we factor in this feedback and try to continuously improve our programmes. We've had students from over 30 different countries over the last three or four years and some of those are showing on the screen as I speak. We have a fairly balanced uh, number of males and females in the classroom, slightly more males, uh, but fairly representative, um, as you can see. So I've covered quite a few things in this introductory chat. 
I'm sure you'll want to know more, but hopefully this has helped you get a better understanding of what the different Masters in Management degrees are that we offer and how they differ and what the similarities are. If you need to know more, then please go to our website and you'll find more information. Alternatively, you can email uh, Dr. Olatunde, particularly if you've got a query about Masters in Management or Masters in International Business and Management. Alternatively, you can email myself, uh, Dr. Phil Kelly, uh, and I manage the Masters in Management and Digital Business. So I've pretty much said everything I need to for now. I'd like to thank you for listening to the presentation. Hopefully it's given you some information that can help you make your decisions and hopefully you'll choose us as a place to do your Masters in Management degree. We've got a great team to help deliver that and I've explained those people during the course of this presentation. We look forward to seeing you in the near Okay, so the aims of this module within your program are to explore management theory and to review management activities in terms of planning and leading, organizing, motivating and controlling. And this module is a 20 credit module, so it's just one of three modules that you'll take in your first semester. Having taken this module, so by the end of semester, by the end of the course, that is, you should have attained these module learning outcomes. And the learning outcomes are really important because they're the kind of things that assessors use to make sure when they're designing assessments that you have met the aims and outcomes of the module itself. So periodically as you go through your studies and when you're focusing your own independent learning and reading, then choose things that help you attain these outcomes. So make sure that you're gaining a critical understanding of management theory over the past century and in particular looking at classical management theories the HR school in terms of motivation, leadership and group work, for example, and also systems and contingency approaches uh, to management. As I said earlier on, most of this module is based on a core textbook. We tend to base it on a core textbook to provide more structure to the course, which is helpful for people at postgrad level and also when people are coming from other countries. We won't cover the whole book on this module. In fact, we'll mainly focus on parts one and parts two. You'll take another module in semester two called Management Practice, uh, and that will really focus on part three of the textbook. But there's quite a few chapters in the book. So really the first part of the book is the foundation of management, uh, and we'll be looking at that in the first half of semester. We'll use the second half of semester to look at the second part of the book, which focuses much more on management activities in terms of planning, organising, motivating and controlling. The chapters are fairly short. Most of them you can read in an hour or two. And really, this is an introductory level module. So we might touch on things like strategic management and other areas of management, but we'll only be touching on them and you'll have more detailed modules on those later in your programme. So how will the module be assessed? There are two different assessments that will be used. You don't have to pass both. You simply have to get an average score of the two components um, of 50 or more to pass the module. So you can fail one of the assessments uh, and as long as you do particularly well on the other one, it still means that you can pass the whole module. So the first assessment that you'll come across will be round about week seven or eight into the module and you'll take a multiple choice test through the Canvas virtual learning environment that we have. There'll be 50 multiple choice questions, each carrying one mark, and they will be based on part one of the core textbook. So get reading now. The uh, questions will carry a mark each, as I said, you'll get an overall score out of 100. And then to get the weighted score that will go towards your whole module, you multiply that by 0 0.3, that's 30%. At the end of the module, and the semester, uh, you'll have a break and then you'll come back and do a group presentation based on the skaters case study. Again, that will be marked out of 100. There'll be an individual and a group component. And whichever score you get out of 100, then you multiply that by 0 0.7. 
when you add the two scores together, the multiple choice test times 0.3 and the group presentation times 0.7, put them together, that will give you your total module score. And that needs to be 50 or more. If it's between 60 and 70, you'll get a merit for the module. And if it's over 70 or 70 and over, you'll get a distinction for the module. But obviously your mean score for the whole degree will have to be in that category to get that award. They're the what we call summative assessments for the module, but we will also use formative assessment. That's assessment where you may undertake a task and we may mark it or give you feedback to help develop you further. So there will be some practice questions for the multiple choice test to get you ready for the test. And there will, will be at least one opportunity where you can do a practice group presentation and I'll give you feedback on that to help you ready for the main assessed task. There'll be test instructions that I'll distribute to you through Canvas for the multiple choice test nearer the time. It's important to think about your studies and to plan ahead and be proactive. So I do suggest you download, if you haven't already got one, a copy of the academic calendar for this academic year. I provided the URL uh, where you can obtain that down at the bottom of the screen. Um, and by having the academic calendar, you can see when the breaks are coming up, uh, where you're up to in the semester uh, and position things generally. But it is worth planning when the different assessments for the other modules that you'll take will take place so that you can plan your time accordingly. As a master's student, it is important to be proactive. Don't leave everything to the last minute. Don't leave all your assessments to the last minute. Uh, you can start working on many of them well in advance and spread them out a little bit for yourselves. But as you can see, most of the academic calendar is based on two semesters. A semester is typically about 12 weeks. So there's 12 weeks um, of class activity before the Christmas break and then 12 weeks after the Christmas break, which normally takes us to about Easter. And then there'll be an assessment period um, before the results are published. So looking at the semester one, our 12 weeks in a little bit more detail, you can see a timeline here numbered from two through to 12. They're the different weeks that we'll have together. So week one will typically be spent inducting you onto your degree program. And week two is when we start inducting you onto the module itself. And in this case, management theory. So this week, pretty much about getting everything going and ready. Uh, and we'll start some aspects of part one of the core textbook, looking at classical management, which will continue next week in week three. That will be followed in week four uh, when we look at the human resources school, motivation theory, leadership, group work. And then in week five, systems theory and contingency theory before week six, when we have a brief introduction to strategy and international strategy. Then typically there will be a self-directed learning week in week seven where you can read and there'll be some other activities scheduled for you. And when you return from that, week eight marked in red is when you'll do the multiple choice test. And that will be based on everything that you've done in weeks two through till six, i.e. part one of the core textbook. After the test, we'll typically form uh, student groups of around four or five people, and you'll be in those groups for the remainder of semester, uh, and you'll deliver your assessed presentation in that group. You'll get a chance to nominate one person who can be in your group, and in weeks two through till six, there'll be group work, but you'll work in random groups so that you can get to know some of the people in your class. In week nine, there'll be a chance to have a practice at group presentations and you'll get some formative feedback to help shape the final presentation. And then in the final three weeks, weeks 10, 11 and 12, we'll look at part two of the core textbook. In particular, we'll look at the management practices of organizing, motivating and controlling. And really, they will be the main part of the assessment in the group presentation. But the group presentation will also expect you to draw on some of the knowledge that you've gained during weeks two through till six. So that's the whole semester. You can see how everything fits together. I'll talk in a minute about the module handbook and details of the assessments themselves will be in that module handbook. So you have everything that you need to help you plan proactively uh, for the assessments that come up both on this module and the other modules that you will be taking. Here's a more detailed look at things. And you can see the week numbers or the, and the session numbers 
and the particular topics that we'll be doing and that gives you the opportunity to plan read ahead and make sure that you stay on top of the reading for this module so what about a typical teaching week then what uh, should you expect how should you prepare for it what should you do to get the most out of your studies while you're here well as we said earlier this module is a 20 credit module that means it equates to about 200 hours of study uh, over the semester uh, but that does vary from individual to individual. If English isn't your first language, it might take you longer. So really, if you look at 200 hours over 12 weeks, and then you factor in some time to prepare for assessment, it means that you should be spending between 12 and 14 hours a week on this module. And normally you'll have two or three chapters to read each week. So pre-reading before class, two or three hours, approximately four hours of class time when you'll engage in activities to reinforce learning from those chapters. And again, the best way to enforce that learning will be to read the chapters again after class and to digest what uh, has happened in the class activities. There'll be additional reading to do, uh, looking at the reference lists on the chapters, but also specified by myself and journal articles in particular, and that'll take a couple of hours each week as well. You can't read too much, so plan to do lots of reading about management as you go through the course. I've put together a brief animation uh, that will explore what you can do for each session. So we've looked at the whole semester, we've looked at a typical week, now let's have a look at a specific session. So you may have one session to look at uh, group theory or to look at leadership or something like that. How, how do you go about getting the most out of those individual sessions? Let's take a look. You'll have a number of resources that you have. You'll have, first of all, the core textbook that we've talked about. You'll also receive a PDF copy of a workbook from myself that you can download on the website. And that will be the activity of class activity. You'll also have our So hopefully I've covered how to go about getting the most of a session, how the session fits into a particular week, how that week fits into the overall semester, and how that fits into your overall degree programme. So group work will be important during this module. Um, people do learn from group work. It's a powerful way of engaging in critical thinking 
uh, but it's also a transferable skill, so it has a double benefit. It's important to attend all of the sessions and to take part in all of the sessions. And it's also important to make sure that you learn how to reference using the Harvard system. And that will be explained during the course. There'll be information in your module workbook, so do read it. Get used to planning your own reading. Don't wait to be told to read things. You can get on with it by yourself. And the university provides lots of resources to help you learn these uh, basic academic skills like referencing and other things. But learning, learning as adults is different. And this video animation talks specifically about uh, a model of learning that Kolb suggested that we actually learn by doing. And this reinforces the idea that it's important for you to involve yourself with the class activities uh, because they are a powerful way like being in the workplace itself to learn. And the basic model suggests that we have different learning experiences. And what's important is that we make sense of those experiences using theory and using textbooks. And then we reshape our ideas that exist in our minds about how to do those activities. And we also read about how we might do those activities differently so that we can experiment in the future and the whole learning cycle continues. What's important from a management perspective is as adults, you know, our heads are half full and whatever we learn on this module, we've got to blend with our previous understandings. And the other key thing to bear in mind on this module is that we learn also, and probably more so, by getting things wrong. So don't be afraid to have a go and get it wrong. This is a safe learning environment. It's okay to get things wrong. No one's going to fire you, sack you, or reduce your pay or anything like that. So have a go, get it wrong, and that will normally be a powerful way to develop yourself.
So, as I said, students learn in this particular way advocated by Kolb, but they also learn through groups, having other people to engage with during a particular experience, to hear different perceptions of management challenges and solutions to those challenges are also powerful ways to engage in critical learning. Besides all of that, we'll all be looking for jobs in the future and the workplace uh, requires people who are good at working in groups. So some of the group work skills that you pick up on this module will help you and will help develop your transferable skills as well as your uh, academic skills as, as we go along. So I've talked quite a lot about the structure uh, of the module, how it will be delivered, how it will be assessed, what you need to do. It is a partnership. And my role is to guide you, facilitate your learning by pointing things that you could learn. But it's also a necessity for you to engage with those activities, engage with the module, to do the work, to attend the sessions, to do the reading in particular, and to do more than what I just specify. As a master's student, it's important that you also act as an independent learner, that you find certain things for yourself to read without being told about it. And part of masterliness is taking control for yourself as an autonomous learner with some guidance. But we need to do that together. So we covered quite a lot for now. Hopefully you're now more in the picture in terms of you know, what uh, we're going to be doing over the coming sessions on this module, what you need to do, how you can prepare, how you can get the most from this session so that you're better placed to take on the workplace with the qualification that you want but also the knowledge that you need to do your job, whatever that might be, after this course. And this module will also act as a foundation for some of your semester two modules, particularly management practice and managing strategy and so on. There will be an opportunity for questions uh, and I'll arrange various chat sessions through Canvas and other means and I'll tell you about those either by email uh, or in some other way. Read the handout again, uh, do the activities, and then it'll be next to time to prepare for the next session in this module.